Hello, my name is Rosemary Stoip. I'm a PhD candidate at Indiana University and first author on A Reasonable Life, Rhythmic Attunement and Sustainable Work at the Intersection of Farming and Knowledge Work, which I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Paige White, Lynn Zombrowski, and Norman Makotosu. The idea for this paper came from other research that Norm and Lynn and I have done on farm work and the role of digital technologies in farming. As part of this research, which involved interviews and participant observation with mostly small farmers in the United States, we noticed that there was a surprising amount of overlap between farming and a completely unrelated job, software development. We kept encountering people who were both software developers and farmers. Now, in one sense, it's not surprising to find people doing both farming and software development because in order to operate a small scale or hobby farm in the US, you often need another source of income and software development and similar knowledge workshops tend to pay well and leave a decent amount of time for hobbies. Still, I found this juxtaposition really interesting because farming and knowledge work seem to be such different kinds of work, especially when it comes to their relationship with time. This prompted us to ask what practices and what temporal logics emerge from this intersection? And more fundamentally, what do people get from combining these types of work? I should clarify what this paper is not. It is not a case of finding a user group that has been neglected by HCI, studying their practices and then reporting on their needs and making suggestions about how to meet them. This was less about how do we support these users and more, what can we learn from this group of people and their practices that we can take into theory and design discussions? With that said, we recruited people who had one foot in each of these work worlds, farming and computer-based knowledge work. We conducted semi-structured interviews and iteratively coded the transcripts to see what themes emerged. In our last few interviews, we also did a card sorting activity via Miro, where we asked our participants to categorize different work activities that they do. A theme that emerged early on was balance. People seem to be balancing different types or aspects of work, as in this quote from Rob about the balance between natural and artificial. He said, it's easier to work with nature than to fight nature. Like in big things or little things, in the time of day you get up or what plants you choose to plant. I think that you can nudge a little bit on the edges of the normal way of things. And other than that, it's usually easier to, I guess, listen to nature. And I think software development feels the opposite, right? Software development is inherently artificial. It's always 72 degrees in my office. I can work at any time of day, more or less, to get stuff done. He's pointing out that computer work is relatively independent of a lot of the natural conditions that affect farm work, temperature, weather, sunlight, because it happens in an artificial environment. Another way to say this is that software development is largely independent of natural rhythms. As Rob says, it can be done at any time of day, in any season, regardless of whether the sun is up and whether it's hot or cold outside. It doesn't have to stop for rain or snow. In this sense, computer-based knowledge work is more flexible than farming. But in another sense, farming is more flexible because it is less tied to the rhythms of what Sarah Sherman calls the nine to five. The nine to five is the dominant temporal order around which much of modern life is organized. It's eight hour work days, five day work weeks, weekends, and all the other expectations that come with this model of work. We found that these two types of rhythms, natural rhythms and nine to five rhythms, were both salient in our participants' lives. They were also complementary. This allowed our participants to play them off against each other and weave them together in interesting ways, doing what we call attunement work. Attunement work is partially inspired by alignment work, a concept that Jackson et al. introduced in 2011 to describe how teams handle rhythms in collaborative work, specifically big scientific projects. They define alignment work as the complex set of actions and activities required to bring otherwise disparate rhythms into heterogeneous and locally workable forms of alliance. So they're saying there are multiple rhythms at play in a research project associated with organizations, scientific infrastructures, people, and the phenomena being studied, and they need to be brought into alignment in order to make the project work. 
What we're proposing is attunement work describes a different way of relating to rhythms in the context of everyday life. Attunement work has to do with how people negotiate their relationships with various temporal rhythms in order to create sustainable work lives for themselves. So it's individual rather than team-based, and it's less about accomplishing specific work goals, more about making work sustainable. Creating temporal arrangements that help you sustain your energy and enthusiasm for work and avoid burnout. In our paper, we describe three types of attunement work, anchoring, decoupling, and gap filling. Anchoring is when someone decides to prioritize a particular rhythm. They make it an anchor point in their routine so that other activities have to be arranged around it. This is a way to create structure and accountability. Often the goal of anchoring was to prevent one type of work from dominating a person's life to the point where it became unsustainable. For some of our participants keeping animals who have non-negotiable needs that have to be met at predictable intervals was a way to make sure they spent some time away from their computers doing physical activity. In this quote from Leah, she describes how having a knowledge work job gives her reliable breaks from the physically demanding work of running a farm. She said, I would say I'm in the best shape of my life, but at some point I need a break and we get sore. And so the nonprofit work is almost guaranteed to be sitting down. So I can sit and have meetings, I can sit and talk on the phone and I need that. <clears throat> the second type of attunement work we observed is decoupling, which is the inverse of anchoring. It's when being tied to a particular rhythm, having that strict routine has become burdensome. In this example, Anthony talks about how keeping chickens and having to manually open and close their coop so they can roam outside during the day but be protected from predators at night, structured his days in a way he didn't want. He said, everybody else who has chickens, they're out there at sunrise to open a door. They're out there at sunset to close the door. If the door is not closed at sunset, there's a potential predator problem. If it's not open early enough, you're now confining your chickens into a small housing. It really puts a framework on, hey, I gotta leave whatever I was doing, drop everything and run over and close up my chickens. His solution was to install electronic doors with sensors that would automatically open at sunrise and close at sunset. That way his days were not ruled by the natural rhythm of sunrise and sunset. He gained flexibility in when he woke up and how he spent his evenings. This gave him the option to pay more attention to other rhythms, like his own circadian rhythms or the social rhythms of his friend group. The last type of attunement work, gap filling, applies to cases where participants combine different rhythms such that gaps in one rhythm are filled by the other. One example involves a tension that exists within nine to five work. On the one hand, you have the expectation of consistent linear productivity. During your designated work hours, you should be working on your job and producing output. On the other hand, you have human brains which have limited attention spans and can't always do mentally intensive work hour after hour for eight hours a day without breaks. Doing physical work on a farm or garden helped our participants to recharge mentally as Joshua described in this quote. Development and programming work is very mental and it can be tiring mentally when you're doing a lot of that. Gardening work is a little bit better, like if you're just doing wheelbarrows of mulch, that's nice and you can let your mind daydream. These are the three main types of attunement work we observed in our interviews with farmer knowledge workers. It may look different in other work contexts where different rhythms are salient and people have more or fewer constraints on their time. Please see the paper for more on attunement work and how it applies to discussions about farming and knowledge work in HCI. And thank you for watching.